I think when it comes to building a business, finding a hungry market, fulfilling a need in the marketplace, that is the most important thing. Assuming that you have that, then the next most important thing are people, right? Because I always say that business is simple, but people are complicated. People are complex. When it comes to selling something, providing a service, providing a product to the marketplace, that's easy. That's just sales and marketing. But people, because everyone is different, it's not static, it's always dynamic. So I believe when it comes to building a company, an organization, finding the right people, having the right people in place, that's the most important thing. Because in business, the best team wins, period. Because the best team, doesn't matter what happens to the marketplace, the economy, the product, that they will find the solutions. They will be resourceful. And then they would always be able to solve problems with the right team and the right culture. I think the, my hiring philosophy, my leadership style or management philosophy, it's very, very different from most CEOs and business owners. Because you look at most companies, they hire based on the resume. We're versus with my organization, even as a global organization, we're growing so rapidly that not a single person on, on my team, I don't think I've ever even read a resume. None of them submitted a resume. None of them did a traditional kind of in approach. That's not how I hire and find good people to join my team. Uh, I hire based on attitudes where there's a saying, you hire for attitudes and you train for skills. And it's very interesting because even the leadership position, the director positions within my organization, every single person, every single director, none of them were qualified, quote unquote, for the job. None of them, quote unquote, have the training or their background for that particular position. They might come in uh, doing a certain task and then from there, I could see that they've got potential. Then I give them more and more responsibilities. And then they would kind of rise up to the rank as uh, I could see their attitude, their skills, their capabilities, their desires, their loyalties. And, and, and they just do that. And sometimes a lot of people, I mean, I have a lot of young people in my organization. And most people, they would see, that's like a kid. How would you give a kid that responsibility or be responsible for you know, millions of dollars of marketing budget. That's not what I see. Shouldn't you hire someone with you know, 10 years of experience and all that? I don't believe in that because as, at the end of the day with what we do, uh, internet, social media, education, business, that things move so fast. I need to be on the pulse, right? I hire millennials where I want to know what they are thinking, right? They make me feel old. <laughs> they, they always bring new ideas. Like, I didn't know about that technology. Or what about that idea? Like what's hip, what's on trend? Uh, if I wanna know how, what young people are thinking, I need to have young people in my organization. So hire, hire for attitude and train for skills. I don't believe in resume. Anybody can, can, can write a good resume. Uh, sometimes you see the best people who are at doing interviews, like they, they give very good interviews. But when you actually hire them for the jobs, they suck. The reason they're good giving interviews because that's what they do. They're very good during interviews, but when it comes to doing things, getting shit done, they just, they are not, they, they cannot do it. I think the way that I look at people is I don't believe in what they say or watch what they do. So I like to make people jump through a lot of hoops, not the traditional hoops about resume, multiple interviews, all that. Let's say example, taking personality tests, uh, giving them certain tasks, see how they perform, maybe even give them certain tasks and, and jobs to work with people within my organization, just see how they perform, because talk is cheap. Once I know that I'm getting feedback from my team, okay, how is this person? I think he or she is pretty good, okay? Let's, let's give them a little bit more. How are they now? Because everyone is different. Some people, they thrive in a more quiet and calm environment. Some people, they thrive in chaos, right? Some people thrive under pressure. So I want them to see how they, what they crack under pressure, how they react to certain things. Some people, they work better when it's, everything is very systematic. Uh, some people work better when it's a very creative environment. With what we do within my organization, at least, we move so fast that it's, 
everything we do, especially me as a leader, when something doesn't work, I pivot. So if they're not used to that kind of environment, example, it's like I compare like an elephant versus a tiger, right? There are organizations that where it takes them three fucking months to make a decision. Where from it's layer, layer, layer. It's that's not the way that we operate. We are very nimble, flexible, quick. So when something doesn't work, we just change it. When something I want to implement, we just do it. So it's very, very fast. And most people are not used to that, envi that kind of environment. So we bring people in if they thrive under pressure, they, they like to the challenge, they like to learn. And once they kind of work with us, they will find this is home. Like I, I like this kind of pace. This is what I, uh, I've been looking for. Or some people they're like, oh, this is way, like this is way too stressful. This is too fast for me. I'm too old for this. Then they, they will leave. So anyone who joins, if it's not a good fit, naturally either they would slow other team members down and then they would kind of pu almost push this person away because it's not a culture fit. Uh, or this, that person would just quit. It's not a good fit. Uh, it's that kind of organic process. Uh, instead of resume, I like to having people send me a video resume. I like to see some people on video, how they sound, and then from there test, uh, give them a lot of hoops to jump through, then work on some projects, see how they perform. And I always look at a person, not the skill set they, they have, because they could get the skill sets and acquire the knowledge. I look at the attitude, and I would always give people different opportunities and chances for them to excel. And if they do good, I would give them more and more responsibilities. I love the Russian doll principle. When it comes to hiring a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, and CEOs, they hire people who are smaller, who are worse than they are, right? So you notice, oh, this is a CEO, they will hire someone, okay, I need a manager. Well, let me hire someone who is like, less skill than me. And then that manager will hire someone who is also less skilled than him or her and so forth, right? On the other hand, if you hire people that are better than you, bigger than you, you end up a company of giants. If you hire people who are smaller than you, who are less than you, guess what? You end up with a company of dwarfs then that's what happens. The reason the CEO, the business owner, hire people that are smaller than them because of insecurities. That they are afraid that if I hire someone better than me, I can manage them. I can control them versus if you hire someone less than you, well, I can easily, more easy to control them. You see this a lot. Also in even in, in Asia, right? In these principles, a lot of these companies, they hire people that they think they easily can control. But the problem is, when you do that, the organization doesn't grow. But versus, if you hire someone that's better than you. Within my company, as the leader, as the CEO, my job is not to make sure that, let's say when it comes to a certain department, a certain division, every single director, every single executive, they can do their job better than I do because they have the area of expertise. That's not what a CEO does. A CEO, I'm the visionary. I have, I have to map out the strategic plan for them to execute. That's my job. But my job is not to perform a certain task you know, better than they do. Think about like the art of war in, in military terms, an ancient military, that the general is not necessarily the best horseman or the, the best guy to use the arrow, the archer, or, or, or any of or the soldiers on the ground. No, they are the best fighters, but the general is the one that sees big picture. How do I mobilize my troops? How do I mobilize my army? What's the best way to allocate the resources? That's the CEO's job. And that's how the Russian doll principles apply. I think it's very difficult to, to motivate people. I think a, a better solution is find motivated people uh, where I believe culture eats strategy for breakfast. That instead of trying to motivate the people and, and try to always like push them and motivate them and put up motivational quotes and all of that stuff, I think if you find motivated people, that people have got that 
fire, that desire within them, you don't need to motivate them. What, when you find very good people who are already motivated, then all you need to do is to create the culture, give them the responsibility, give them authority and power, and then get the hell out of their way and let them do their thing. That's the best. The people are motivated. They will find the answers. They would want to, to make stuff happen. They would want to grow. They would want to help you grow, not because as, an, as a company obligation, it's because it's who they are. And which is a very small percentage of the population because most people have no desire to grow. Myself, I'm a very self-motivated person. I don't need people to motivate me. I don't need people to pump me up. I am motivated. I get up I, in the morning, I go, I'm driven. So I want the same people within my organization who have the same desire versus that I have to push them, motivate them. If we spend so much time trying to motivate your people, then you're not spending enough time getting shit done or, or, or moving forward. So find motivated people and then get the hell out of the way. In this very competitive business environment, I think the advantages that we have, or if you want to have that advantage, is not how much, I don't care how much success that we have in the past. Oh, look at our glory days and what we've done. What you've done in the past doesn't mean shit, right? It's about where you're going in the future and what you're doing now. And in order to, to thrive in any economy, constant learning especially uh, us, what we do is a global organization, an education organization. Education learning is extremely critical. So every single one of my members, they know, like, uh, one, of the, one of the things that we do is we would go to training, right? We would invest in, in training because that's what we do. We are constantly learning. Myself, I invest hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars every year in my own education. And I expect you know, my, my team members to do the same. So my policy, and, then, and this is very different from most organizations, because most organizations, they would, hey, let me, let me send you to training, right? Let, let, here's a, a workshop that will help you improve your skill. Uh, let the, let the corporate, corporation pay for all this stuff. I don't do that. My people, if they, they go to a certain training, they invest in themselves. They pay for their own flight. They pay for their own hotel. They pay for their education. I don't want them to do it because it's an obligation or I want them, it's, it's required if you want to get promoted and any of that stuff. I want them to do it because they want to get better. If I invest in my own education, they should do the same. And when they learn new skills and, and upgrade the skills and be able to perform better, then they'll get compensated. But the learning aspect, I want them to invest because I know that if they invest in their own education, whatever they pay, they pay attention they will get more out of it. Versus, I have, I have like, I know employees have friends where, oh, here we go, corporation, send me to this training, I gotta go for two days of this shit, right? And then I can't wait to get out of the training, I go to the bar, I'll hang out, right? All this shit. How are you gonna learn anything going in with that attitude? It's, it's bullshit. Versus, you are there to learn. And I don't even, at this point, sometimes I suggest, but not much, what they need to learn, they will find out on their own. So, hey, I need to learn about this particular skill. I need to take this course to stay on trend about what's happening with this because they want to get better. And they can see me leading by example. I'm always learning, I'm reading, I'm attending workshops. When it comes to education, I'm never on the cheap. I'm always the most dedicated student. I'm a good leader because I'm a good student. So that's the culture that we have.